G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going for the big one again. I know you didn't see the last one because I scraped it. But I figured out that my copper was the culprit. I know I make my metallics thicker, but my copper is really thick. When I do gold, I have two parts gold, one part pouring medium. When I have silver, I have one and a half parts silver one to one part pouring medium. And then when I do the copper, because it's so thick, I do one to one. And I've forgotten about that. So I was making my copper really thick and my paint just wasn't flowing. My cells weren't coming up. I think that's what the problem was. So let's go again. I've made the copper thinner. 60% blue, 40% water. I made this big bottle up this morning and I've used the whole thing, a kilo of it. Now I've got just over two kilos of mixed paint, uh, 2,070 grams to be exact, which is 74 ounces. So a lot of paint. Uh, 200 grams of pouring medium, 200 grams of white, 180 grams of pouring medium, 220 grams of coastal turquoise because it's a bit thinner. Just got a little bit of this peacock. I only want a little splash of the lighter one. 100, 100 grams of pouring medium and 120 grams of the peacock. It's a little on the thin side as well. Anything made with turquoise seems to be thin. Right, the culprit. I have got... Uh, 180 grams of pouring medium and 200 grams of copper. Probably going to go the opposite way this time and I'm going to be getting really wonky cells. 200 and... What have I got here? I've got a lot of navy. 180 grams of pouring medium to 220... Nope. What have I got? 220 grams of pouring medium to 200 grams of paint. I was looking at it the other way. I made it a little bit thinner. Oops, sorry, I'm shaking the table. My tripod's just over there on the table, so every time I shake the table, it's going to rock. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem, sorry. Um, so I've got my treadmill silicone in already just to save time. 14 drops in these three big cups. And just eight in that one, none in the white. Right, oh, uh, so metallic copper is the other one I've got, and the deep space is the navy, and the pale aqua one is called peacock. So that's my colours. I'm going to do a dirty pour again. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the white in. I'll try not to shake the table. Oh, so I better not pour too much in. I did make up an extra white. When I was doing my other one, I just I thought, I haven't got enough white to make up a little bit of extra white. My white tends to get lost in my pores. And I do want it sort of on the beachy side, so a little bit more white would be good. Hopefully I've got enough of white this time round. I haven't got any more made up. I'm just going to drop my paints in from up high and let them blend a little bit in the cup. Flip the cups over. I'm not going to drag. I'm just going to do a flip cup. And then tilt. And then torch. And then tilt some more. Right, so just two of them are going to have this lighter turquoise in and the others are going to have the darker turquoise. So I think I'll do these two with the lighter turquoise. Pour that in from up high. Like so. Make sure I've got equal amounts. I don't want any cups with more paint than the others. So how I've worked out my paint amount is I've times my size. So this is a 40 centimetre by 120 centimetre which is 16 by 48 inches. So I've gone 40 times 120 
and then I've divided that by 2.5 and that's given me the amount of paint that I require for this core. I am using slightly less paint than I used to use last year. I just think that stretching it out more gives me a better result. Okay, so those two have got the lighter uh, aqua in them. They can come back in line now. And we'll go for the copper. Yeah, copper in all of them. Make sure I've got enough to go around. up all my paint. I actually haven't got any left for any edges so I'm just going to have to make sure I've got enough to cover my corners otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Righto, now the lovely navy blue will go straight through into the bottom of all of them. Alright, so third time lucky with this pour. The first one, you didn't see the first bit, but that was the one that I swiped and then did the balloon dips on it. And then I went again, and you didn't see that one, you probably just saw the photo up on Facebook. Right, oh, third time lucky, and hopefully me fixing that problem with the copper, hopefully that was the problem. Normally I do thin my, or thicken my uh, metallics a lot, but as I said, the copper doesn't need to be thickened. It's really, really thick. Oops, I'm going to make sure I put these in the right order, had not I? Come back, come back. I right, see so you're going there, you're going there. So these are the two that have got the pale aqua in them. So I'm just going to flip them over. I don't want to drag, I just want to flip. And not splurge. Oops, oops, oops. That's the bar there. Let's get that off the bar. Now these two edge ones, I have to make sure that they're far enough over to the sides so that I don't have to worry about my sides too much. All right, let that sit for a minute. I've been showing you my colors. Normally I show you my colors now and I haven't, so done that. Looking good so far. Let's just smooth these blobs off. So I think I told you that one of my teacup poodles is pregnant, Lexi. She's due, well, yesterday or today or tomorrow, somewhere around there. And I took a temperature, I've been taking it over the last few days because once the temperature drops, then I know she's going to go into, well, she's starting labour. So a few days ago, it was about 37 and a half. Today, when I took it, when I got out of bed this morning, 36.2. So 36.2 is pretty much the lowest it's going to go. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, but that's the, te that's the temperature that it gets to. And then she's going to birth within sort of 12 to 24 hours. So I'm on puppy watch. I'm going to do this pour. And then I'm going to go and sit with her for the rest of the day. And we're just going to cuddle on the couch and watch some Netflix. And uh, wait for the puppies to arrive. Right, oh, let's do this. Just flip over, no dragging, just flip. Obviously I have to just drag just a tiny little bit to get that out and then I'm gonna put this back here on the corner. And that corner. Alrighty, so that's cups done. Oh, that's looking better already. 
Mm. And I don't mind if my paint all blows into each other, that's fine. shouldn't be draining because I'm getting these lines. Last one. Back up here. A bit on the corner. Alrighty. Get rid of those cups. That is looking better. So there's a lot, that's that pale aqua there. This one's got it too, but you can't really see it. Maybe the cells that come up underneath will, will have it. Right, so now I don't want to torch just yet. I want to cover one side first. Um, I normally cover this side first, so I'm going to have to twist them around. Hopefully I won't knock the tripod off the table. All right, let me do this. Oops, it's heavy. <laughs> Try and turn it without losing paint onto the floor. I think I did it. <laughs> Normally when I do that, I hit drop the paint on the floor. All right, so what I want to do is I want to cover that side first. But I don't want much paint to go over here. I want it to go sideways because I need to fill these in. So that's the plan. Stan, let's do it. And I'm going to just do exactly the same as I do with my bigger paws. I'm going to walk them. You're giving me grief. That's where that bar is. Maybe I should pop a little bit of extra paint there, but I don't have any extra paint. I don't, I don't. I'm just going to have to walk it. All right, so I'm going to have to go very carefully with this one because I ain't doing it again. Three times a charm, I'm not doing it again. Well, you know I will because I have to do things until I get them right. Unfortunately, it's real pain to have that sort of personality, <laughs> but I do. Right, this isn't going anywhere. See, the paint is here and it's got to go a long way to get to that little corner there, but I'm going to have to do it. And as I said, I don't want the paint going over here just yet. I'm going to get to that corner first and back. Take it all the way back and get to that other corner and back. Now I know a little bit's gone over already, that's okay. Don't want to waste too much paint over my edges. I did that last time and then I didn't have enough paint left on the surface. I'm not going to worry about that corner. It can just stay there like that. I'm not going to stress about it. This section's a bit big. Okay, so now what I need to do is, very carefully, can someone jump down and help me turn? <laughs> I'm to have to turn this baby. All right, let's see how we go. Try not to get paint on the floor. Oops. Try not to knock it. Okay, I did put my hand in it a little bit. It's just really tricky to turn. Make sure I haven't got paint on the floor. Okay, I think that's back in its little lines that I made. 
Phew, right, so far, so good. Now, I'm going to torch. And then all I have to do is just walk it a little bit, this far. So that's good. If you're moving your paint that far, obviously that's how much your cells are going to stretch. Let's go. Last time when I did this, when I torched, the cells didn't really pop up. I had to go over quite a few times to get any cellage to come up. Um, and I think that was because my copper was so thick, the cells just could not get through that layer of copper that I had. So let's see how we go this time. And I also think that I over thickened my coastal turquoise. That's that one that's really quite thin. I think maybe I over thickened that one as well. You think by now I would know the consistency, wouldn't you? But look, every pore seems to be different. What you do for one pore doesn't necessarily work for the next one. But I do try to get consistent results. That's why I weigh everything, make sure that I can get you know, the same consistency every time. Because just by looking at it, it's tough. And you forget what it looks like from pore to pore. So that's why I, I weigh everything. Come on, cells, up you come. I don't want to get too close because I, I want some of this beautiful background to show through. So I don't want to get too carried away with cells. And the paint's still pretty thick on here, so it's taking a while to come up. And I think maybe my torch is running low on butane too. Okay, let me just... Yeah, it's pretty empty actually. Tiny little bit left. I'll finish it off and then I'll throw the can away. How are we looking so far? Is that something in there? I don't know. So when you use a metallic paint, nine times out of ten you're going to get some wobbly cells from the metallic paint. Uh, because it does act differently to other paints. But if you're aware of that and you don't mind that, then go for it, I say. I do want some copper coming through because I've got copper in my other paintings in my living room. baby cells. I could do with some more just there where it's quite dark. Anything happening? Not too much happening in this section here. Alright, let's leave that and um, have some beautiful background still. Okay, see at this stage my other two paws look beautiful. It wasn't until I started tilting that I lost the plot, but I didn't cover the whole side before I torched. See there's a, a metallic cell there, it's gone wobbly. So I am going to get some wobbly cells, can't be helped. Alright, let's do this. I'm going to hold on to it. I have to um, hold my push pins, no, I've got nothing to hold on to. Alright, I'm going to have to hold the push pins. Left, right, not my left, your right. Goodness, there's a lot of paint here already. Mm. Maybe if I do it this way. See, this is about to go over, and over there, up the other end, hasn't gone over yet.
can't do much about that. Just going to have to do my best. If I had a catcher down here, I could keep some of this paint from falling over the edge, but I would need four hands to do that. white have I? Considering I had so much white to begin with. I'm going to go this way. I know that's all stretching but I have to try and get. <laughs> no, don't stretch out again please. I'm not going to do you again. I'm going to get. Here, this part's giving me grief. Because that's already gone over, which means that's going to really stretch out. I haven't got any more paint to put over this corner. some up and put some here and hope that I can tip that off. The weight of it being here will hopefully tip it off. That's the only thing I can do. We should have tried to cover this corner a little bit better before I started tilting the other way. I'm just going to throw a heap of paint on that. And I'll do the same on the other side. And hopefully this amount of paint is enough to pull that paint over. Hopefully. But I doubt it. I think I'm going to end up with a very messy looking corner. I'm going to have to go around the other side of the table, pick up some paint. I'm going to do the same thing here. Put a heap of paint in there. And hope that the weight of that will pull it over. here is already really overstretching. Um, I wonder if I can get the weight of the paint back to the middle and then see if I can get it to go that way into that corner. If this was a small canvas that's what I would be doing. I'd be taking the weight back to the middle and over to that corner. So let's do that. Now see it's going, going slowly all the way over there to that corner, but what can I do? It's all getting stretched and everything. So, okay, that corner's done. Now it's a matter of what's it going to look like once I've taken it all back again the other way. Go back to the middle. The paint back to the middle, and now I'm going to have to go the opposite way. Look at all this, it's all overstretched, and go to that corner. And as soon as it goes over, come back. Try and take the weight of the paint back to the middle and try and straighten up my lines a little bit. Okay. Um, it's not wonderful, but it's certainly it's certainly an improvement on my last two efforts. It's just this this panel here that 
went over before it was ready. If it, it hadn't have gone over, um, I don't think I would have struggled as much. But hey, that, that's okay, isn't it? Are we happy with that one? So I had a little think about my paw here <clears throat> for the last hour or so. And I decided that it's probably not something I would want to hang on my wall as is. I'm really not happy with some of these cells. I know, I'm very picky. I like my cells to be nice and round. So I'm going to balloon dip in a few different spots and see what it looks like. And then I'm going to do, well, another day, I'm going to do what I said and um, just torch in selective areas, like to follow these lines and have more background. I just think this is really, really busy for me. And uh, yeah, so here we go. I've got my balloon. I'm going to hang on to the fingers, hang on to the knot. And the first spot I'm going to do is here. I also don't like this bit here, so I'm going to maybe go down a little bit that way so that I can then come up this way. And I've got my paper towel here ready to go to clean the balloon off. So what I'll do is I'll have to go over twice because of that amount of paint that's still in the center. So I'll have to go over twice to try and get some of that off. But I'll go once over everywhere that I want to first and see how it looks and then go over a second time just to get rid of some of that excess paint. Right. So I do like the, you know, the light colours that come through. I just think they're pretty. So I'm not sure how many I'm going to do yet. I'll just dip into the areas that I really, really don't like. This area here is very big. This last cup that I had, it really tilted that way. Um, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. These two here in the middle, they really got squashed together, didn't they? Because they couldn't stretch out. That's the problem you have when you have too much paint on the surface. Your middle section can't stretch out. Your two side sections squish in. So that's a bit of a problem with doing these big canvases. Not being able to stretch the middle out. And dripped into the centre. That's pretty, getting a lot of that navy through. So where the cells are incorporated into the balloon dip, that's where they make those little petals. And then if you don't have cells, like in this white, you don't get a petal, you just get a bit of a, a stripy look. Okay. Now, where this comes down like this. I don't like that so I'm going to sort of go in the middle there so that I don't see that line as much. Well, there's a lot of paint in there. I thought I tipped a lot of it off but obviously not. And same with this. It's really wide here and then it goes in so I'm going to sort of see if I can disguise that a bit by doing that. Just sort of Broke that line up a bit. And I want to go and do that, but I'm going to have to go around and do that. But I will, while I'm here, do this dark section here and see if there's anything under it. Oh, there is, because that was such a very dark corner. I really didn't like that corner. And the opposite here, a very light section there. And that's just brought some more colour into that area there. So I'm liking this, you guys. 
Um, this bit here where there's a lot of big cells, I'm going to go through and now do like a couple of smaller dips. But I'll finish here first. So I want to go there, here, and maybe I'll do a smaller one in the corner over there. So my um, paper towel is pretty much used. So what I do now is just fold that over. And then I can go again and use that same piece. See, recycling. Let's see if I can just do a little one in here. Don't push down too hard. Maybe just a little one there too. You don't want to get too close to the edge of your canvas either because then you will end up getting a, a bald section. So just be aware of that. Mm, this is okay. The cells are nice. Those cells are nice. Now I'll go around the corner. I'll just do a little one here. See, I don't like how that's come in. So I'll just do a little one there. Just a little dip. Sort of hide that there. And where else? How do I feel about that corner? Leave that for now. I'll go in here and do this section that I don't like. Just I don't like all that there, that whole section. I could probably only go one though in the middle, so maybe a big one in the middle. Like so. It's quite a big one, wasn't it? It's pretty though, that one. And then I think I'll do another big one here. I'm going to do quite a lot, actually. And a little one just there. I'm going to do it. I might as well do it properly, eh? Hey? Make a feature out of these little flowers. Little one there. So not many cells incorporated into that one. It's just more of a, um, I don't know what we would call it. Not really a flower. Okay, I think, um, maybe just a little one. I haven't got a little one there. So let's do a little one there. I like the different sizes. I'm just going to take away this paper towel and get myself a clean one. And then I will do the second dip and get some more of that paint off. So I can't leave it with that much paint in the, in the centre of the balloon dips. So I don't mind going over them twice, um, that's fine. More than twice, um, I tend to maybe get a bit of a bald area, so I try not to go over more than twice. I'm just gonna fold this over. Try not to let it touch my painting, hey? Okay? Yeah, there, go there. And another bit over here. Hope you guys don't mind me doing my balloon dip, but um, yeah, I just just wasn't that happy, you know. And if you're not happy, you're not happy. Doesn't matter if other people like it. I have to like it. Well, more importantly, I have to love it. If it's going up on my wall, I have to love it. Okay, now we're gonna go over again. Let me just walk around and see what I think before I. Stop the balloon dipping. Do I want any more? Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Not really enough room in there to do another one. Actually, maybe here. I can do a little one just there. Just a little guy. Oh, that's brought up some of that 
pale aqua. I haven't seen very much of the pale aqua. I know I didn't put very much in, but still, I haven't seen a lot of it. And I think I'll leave that. Those are pretty, aren't they? Those cells are pretty. So basically just go in on the areas that you really don't like. Now, I'm going to start up here and double dip. There we go. That's the second dip. That's just taking off a little bit more paint. And that one. I'm just start up this end so that I know where I'm up to. Work my way down. Try and remember which are the little ones and which are the bigger ones. Try not to dip paint into the middle. This one's got a lot of paint in it still, this one. Work my way down. I have to change my the towel again in a sec. Okay, that's about all I can do. I have to change this. I guess I could use the back, couldn't I? Could. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty one. And when you go to do it again, if you think, oh, I need to really go down that way a little bit more, then just move your balloon down a little bit more that way. That's fine. Doesn't have to be in exactly the same spot again. Um, did I do him? Can't remember. This was just a little one in the middle. And that was just a little one as well. I'm glad I'm getting a little bit more white up because I was a bit upset that I've lost pretty much all my white when I poured. I had this streak through here, which was pretty. A little streak through there, but not a lot of white came through. Oh, did I do you? I can't remember. Now, I should have incorporated some of that into this one. So I'm going to move it down just a bit and do a bigger one. And just try to... I've got that cell there that I didn't like. Now, let me change this one more time. I can feel the weight in that paper towel, so I'm certainly taking the paint off is what you need when you do this. You can't leave too much paint on the surface. So it kind of makes a little well there of paint. I just wanted to break up that white and include those two cells there rather than have that stripe right through. Um, now I can't remember what I'm up to. I've done that one because I incorporated that cell. I think this is the only one left to do. I think. See there, I'm getting too close. It's a pity this one hasn't got some more blue in it. There we go, that's brought a bit more blue up. Just have to be careful now that I don't go <clears throat> too far, take too much paint off. I don't like that white blobby bit there. Oh, it's still there. That one's got a lot of paint on it. All right, I think that is going to do me. 
Hang on, this one over here doesn't look very good. All right, now learn when to say no to stop. Okay, so that is say stop. Um, just debating whether to do one just here, just to balance it. Mm, no, nope. I quite like that section. Doesn't have to all be covered. Alrighty, now let me clean this and I'll take you down for a close up. See what you think. I think it's better. Um, well, it was either this or scraping it, so there we go. Get rid of these gloves. Oh, I didn't put my bright light on. Here's my light. Is that better? It's getting dark in here. I forgot to put my light on. My goodness. Silly me. Mm. Actually, now that I'm up here, you know, I do want one over on that side. Climbed up the ladder and looked at it and it just looks as if it needs something here. I'm taking my gloves off now. Little baby one. I have to just dip that a few times. I know, I'm not taking my own advice, am I, just to leave well enough alone. Take it over a few times just to get that blob of paint out of the centre. All right, and that's added a little bit of white into that corner there, that edge. All right, now I'm done. Climb back up here. Righto, let's take you down for a close-up, eh? I don't know if it's better with that light on or off. Hmm. I don't know. I'll hold it like this. And then I can walk down the side of the table. And show you as I walk along. Some pretty colours. The flowers have brought up some pretty colours too, which is nice. So yeah, I'm happy I did it. I will do another pour. And um, I'll do some stripes, I'll do flip and drag, I'll do the stripes. I'll tilt, cover the whole thing, and then I'll torch selectively in my, just to follow the stripes to see how it looks. Hmm, I think that's what I'll do. I can't even zoom back and show you the whole thing. It's too big. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Well, I enjoyed doing this. I did. It certainly was a challenge doing a, a big pour like this. And uh, yeah, still struggle with, with big ones. I mean, you look, you have good days, you have bad days. You know, your mix can be too thin, it can be too thick. You think you got it right and it's still wrong. But um, it's all fun, all experimenting. So have a go. If you don't like it, swipe it. If you still don't like it, balloon dip it. If you still don't like it, Scrape it and do it again. It's just paint. Have fun. All right, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.